Michael speaking. Yeah, hi Michael, it's Mike Persh from Adelaide. Aaron oh, set yeah. me up for a chat with you. How you doing? Not too bad, mate. Yourself? Cool, cool. You ready to roll? Yeah, I am, yeah. All right. Uh, great to talk to you. Thank you uh, Thank you very much for giving me some of your time. Great to be here. <laughs> um, it's, it's been a year or so since the bad loves have been back in the land of the living. How does, how does it feel? How's it all going? Obviously good. Fantastic. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's like a very automatic um, a kind of uh, chemistry happening be- between the band. You know, we may not have played for several years as a band, but immediately we get on stage, it all comes together. Strange, beyond our control, really, it just seems to happen. And, and a new audience for you guys? How, how are you seeing your audiences now compared to, to 15 years ago? Well, it's really interesting. I suppose they've, you know, they've matured uh, a lot of them with us. <laughs> so... Um, uh, that, that's interesting to see, but also there's a, a younger uh, crew that perhaps haven't seen us before, so, so um, it's a mixed bag, really. Well, you, you guys really brought sort of a, a, an R&B sound to uh, to a new generation in Australia. You, you really um, you were one of the only bands that sort of that sort of drew that from the past, but gave it a fresh new sound. I don't know, I don't know that, that there was any master plan to, to that idea. We're kind of just following our nose. And, and so, you know, it just happened, I suppose, that, that uh, I mean, there were plenty of bands doing it and doing it really well in this country, but but uh, a bit of a fluke that, that anyone noticed us, really, apart from everyone else that's doing it as well. And, and a huge part of the sound, for me anyway, was, was, was Tony's Hammond organ sound. That just seemed to, to just bring, to just lift the band sound to another level. Yeah, look, it's a majestic sound, isn't it, the, the Hammond? I'm still stunned by it when, when you hear it, uh, a big, loud behind you because Tony's incredibly loud too on stage so there's nothing subtle or background about it though he's, <laughs> though he's sitting on the back line of the stage it's, uh, it's, it does drive the band it really does it's, uh, uh, but we've also got Robbie Tronker who's another player so we're lucky we've got two um, players that have been with us from the start of the band and we go be- from, uh, between them but gee it makes a big difference we- without it it's just start sounding like um, most other bands I guess it, it's it's a monster of an instrument and uh, and and sadly not seen too much. I guess it's a nightmare to take on the road. Well, you know, in this digital age, too, it's really everybody wants to just sort of uh, emulate sounds rather than produce the actual originals. And uh, but there's a diehard. It's really encouraging. There's a diehard um, amount of people that have actually got big ugly vans full of these Leslies and Hammonds and things. They drag these monster things that are supposed to be installation units around the stages to play. It's really encouraging. You know, it takes uh, three men and a, and a trolley to shift half these things, so so uh, it's uh, very encouraging. Fantastic. Oh, that's great. <laughs> if, if, if we go back in time, mate, um, Get On Board and Holy Roadside was, was such huge successes. Did that did that put a lot of pressure on you? Now, as you look back, did it put a lot of pressure on you guys to, to like keep up to, to that huge success? Well, it, it wasn't coming from within the band at all. Because we we sort of pretty much just as I say followed our nose, just did what we did, but but we were conscious of it coming from the industry side of it, and all of a sudden people were paying attention. Where once they would just pretty much ignore us, and that was fine because it just left us to our own devices. But yeah, you're right. There's there's definitely pressure came in, and and we um, I like to think we didn't respond to it, but but I reckon it, it just you know it gets in anyway. You know that people people do have uh, an effect on you and what they expect of it. So, uh, it's interesting how that creeps into the equation. And I also recall you guys did a lot of work in Europe back then, but I don't think people sort of remember or, or actually realise that you know you had quite a quite a profile in Europe. Yeah, we did, did quite a bit of touring and, and with Jimmy uh, Barnes at the time too. But when, for example, when those Aria things happened, I don't, we didn't get to go to those because we were out on tour or somewhere. I can't really remember where we were to be honest, but but. Um, it's a bit of a blur, you know, and you just follow it when you've got a chance. You, you follow it through and, and hopefully, um, um, you know, the, 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 the recognition side of it is, is, uh, is not what we're, we're there for. And so um, uh, we were hoping to spend a bit more time in Europe too, you know. It was just, um, it was good, at that point it was good to play in front of audiences that had never um, heard us before. So you've got to prove yourself uh, alongside every other band, you know. Uh, no one could care less about us over there, so it was really good and challenging to, to play in front of them. 
yeah, I guess it's an interesting thing to, to come from Australia where your tunes are known to go in front of an audience where it's all new and uh, and see what kind of reaction you get, yeah. Well, it's a real world experience, isn't it? <laughs> it's, not, <laughs> it's not people being, being polite because they, they feel they should clap. They, they, they um, either respond or they don't respond, you know, to be honest. But, you know, we're, we're so lucky in this country because we've got pretty uh, tough audiences and we've got a hell of a lot of competition in, in terms of uh, be, being musically so vital um, Australia and so competitive, so it's it's uh, it sets you up for work anywhere in the world, really. If you if, if you're good enough to to um, uh, carve a living out of it, and, you know, maintain your, um, your musicality here, you're in business, I reckon. No, you you're dead right, and it's been like that for forever, really, hasn't it? And that's hasn't it? yeah, yeah, and uh, and still continuing with with a lot of young guys, which is really good. Yeah, it's, it's a bit much when you see young guys, you think, yeah, and absolutely blow you away. It's like, yeah. wow. Yeah, I, I want to give them a clip behind the ear and say, wake up to yourself. That, that shouldn't happen for another 10 years yet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and the good news for folks uh, in this part of the world, mate, you're heading to uh, to play Norwood Live this weekend. That's right, yeah. So we're, we're um, very much looking forward to that. It's a fabulous little room. And, and uh, we played there, um, I, I can't remember when it was last year or earlier this year, but, but uh, looking forward to getting back there and playing. It is a great venue indeed. It is, yeah, to write it is. And so what can folks expect to hear this time around from the Bad Loves? Well, we've been working on a new uh, bunch of tunes for an album, so we uh, we decided uh, um, to road test them. In fact, we're going into uh, into Mixmasters, into the, the Adelaide studio, uh, to record um, the first part of our album there um, So uh, next week, in fact. So uh, we've done a, just a handful of shows to, um, to test out the new material uh, on the road before we go straight into the studio the following day and start recording. So. Oh, fantastic. That's great news you're doing some recording here. Mixmasters is a, uh, a great little studio, been around for a long time. It's a bloody beauty, and it's run with passion. You know, Mick Wordley, the bloke that runs it, he's, um, he's very passionate about um, his studios and his gear and things. He knows his stuff, so, so he was um, a dead cert to, to do the job for us. Wonderful, wonderful. So we'll expect to hear some uh, some new Bad Loves uh, material out to out in the shops or early next year. Yeah, the new year exactly. Yeah, yeah. We'll 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 get behind that with a bit of touring and stuff. But uh, um, it's very exciting at the moment because it's all it's all come together um, very naturally and with with uh, we're totally independent at the moment. So it's just like the band starting up again. Um, you know, there's no money in it. It's just we're doing it for the right reasons. So it's very exciting. Fantastic. Well, you and you and Jack have uh, have put out some great solo material as well. Was will we hear any of that? Oh, thank you. Well, probably not on this tour because we're focusing so much on the on the album, and, and really it's almost like a process. It's a pre-recording process for us, you know, for for the songs that we're working on, and uh, uh, we probably won't do. I, mean, I know Jack has got his solo thing, and I'm doing a, a new solo album at the moment myself. So that that's totally independent, uh, and I'll bring a different. Uh, Oh, fantastic! I hope, I hope the profile of uh, of the band sort of brings you know your solo and stuff and and Jack's up you know up to people's attention a bit because because both you guys are, are uh, you know for Barefoot was a great record, mate. Oh, thank you. Uh, and I I hate to admit it, but but one of my favourite tunes on the uh, on the CD was your remake of Jive Talk. Hey, that's my favourite. That's the only <laughs> one I listen to. I get a laugh out of it. I mean, it was pretty pretty. Um Dumb effort at a, at a, at a great song, uh, um, but but um, that lady that was singing on that, uh, she's a, a bit of a, um, a raw gem as well. Um, so so she, she's uh, uh, Mega Riley. She's she's got a fantastic um, voice and and uh, attitude too. So it's very merry and faithful. Yep, yep. Uh, that lady. But yeah, I, I quite enjoyed that song. The rest of it I can't listen to. <laughs> Oh, all right, Michael. Well, thank thank you so much, mate. And I uh, I hope you have a big uh, a big crowd in Adelaide on the weekend. And uh, look forward to hearing some new tunes. And it's it's really exciting that uh, not not a lot of recording happens in Adelaide, especially on a you know from a, a band with a national uh, profile like yourself. So that's that's really good to hear. Oh, that has to change, I reckon. <laughs>
no, thank you, Mike. That's great. I'm, I'm, um, I'm wrapped that we were able to do it there. So, can I get you to do a tag for me before we uh, close up shop? Of course. The show is called Sitting in a Bar in Adelaide. Yeah. And if you can just give me something like this is Michael blah 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 from the Bad Loves or whatever, and you're listening to. Thank you, mate. Fantastic. I, uh, I look forward to seeing you guys on uh, on Saturday night, and I, uh, I hope it's a good one. Yeah, you got tickets for that. I mean, you, you, your name will be on the door for that one. So. Fantastic, mate. I appreciate it. Thank you very much, and uh, have a great rest of the day, and uh, look forward to the gig. Hey, thanks a lot. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you again. Cheers. Bye.